Hey, let's play a game. I'm going to show you three pictures and you try to guess the title of them based on what you see in the photos. Once you've seen all three pictures, I will put up the actual titles and we'll see how close you are, if you're correct or if you're not. I will try to give you some time in between the pictures, but pause the video if you need to. With that being said, here is the first photo. Here is the second photo. And here is the last photo. I will show you them all together one more time. So do you have your titles? So now here are the answers. It doesn't matter what the actual titles for these photos are. Every single one is correct. Why? Because all you need to get started with photography is a reason for why a particular photo deserves a title. If that comes from a feeling it gives you, a memory, or even the story behind it. You are what gives a photo the substance it needs to be important because only then they'll be ready to share with the world as your work as the photographer. Uh, I'll explain further after the intro. You know, imagine that was like the whole video. I could have really just left it there and be like, it's open to interpretation. Why? Art. But, <laughs> but I am a nice guy, so I will elaborate on what even that meant because it makes sense to me but it might not make sense to you the photos you saw in the beginning weren't even your pictures i asked you to come up with a title for them with the few seconds you saw of them i didn't even ask you if you considered these to be good pictures or even whose they were or even giving you the official titles for these pictures because it does not matter. Giving a photo a, a title seems like such a basic step, but it's very important because ultimately you're declaring that this photo is good enough, good enough to be your work or good enough to be a piece of work. And like I said in the beginning, you, you come up with a title based on a specific reason for it. But what this is really doing is getting you to think about that photo and why it's important to you so you're able to talk about why it's important and you're able to capture the things that are important to you and that's really the one thing you need to get started because it's like that proper step forward to think about photos more deeply shifting that mindset to really putting meaning behind photos that's the whole purpose of it so yeah, there you go. Great video. Thank you for tuning in. Now I'm kidding. This is not me saying you don't need to learn the basics. You need to learn the basics with anything you do. So that's what this second half of this video is. That was kind of the warm up exercise to lesson one. This whole video is lesson one. So the basics, three things, shutter speed, ISO, aperture. The big three of photography, shutter speed. It's the speed at which the shutter of the camera closes. Two things that it does, lower the shutter speed. The more motion that it captures, if you're trying to capture a subject and using a low shutter speed, it will kind of like track its motion. The shutter is closing at a slower rate. It's capturing everything that is moving until that shutter finally closes. Faster shutter speed, is how you kind of freeze a fast moving object. So first you see this in sports photography, they're using a very high shutter speed. But apart from motion, shutter speed also entails the amount of light the camera takes in. If it's a slower shutter speed, more light is going into your camera because the shutter is taking longer to close, so more light is seeping in. But a faster shutter speed, less light is going in. So ISO, how I like to think about ISO, and this might not be the proper definition, but you're watching one of my YouTube videos, so too bad. We're, we're learning this my way. We're learning this my way. So I like to think of it as artificial light in your camera that your camera produces. When you're outside and you have the big scorching sun, you need to have a low, very low ISO, but 
In darker situations, you boost that ISO up and it will help assist you with getting more light into your photo. But keep in mind, higher ISO, more grain that your photo picks up. Aperture, uh, this is your depth of field. But numbers from a number standpoint, a lower aperture, you will get that kind of like shallow depth of field. So in portraiture, if you're using a lower aperture, that's how you get that nice blurry bokeh background that it is what being a photographer is all about. Um, no, but, and then for a higher aperture, more stuff is in focus. So this kind of is used for landscapes to get more stuff in focus and everything like that but yes like shutter speed with light a lower aperture allows more light to get in higher aperture less light is getting in all three pertain to one thing exposing your photo it's like a team all three have to be adjusted to properly expose your photo. So you learn what they are, you learn what they do, and now you gotta take them and practice to get comfortable with what they do. In the given settings that you might be shooting at, what works and what doesn't. So yeah, that's lesson one. That's the whole video. Um, no, I'm kidding. I know why you're still here. What camera should I buy, Jared? Here are a list of cameras that I came up with. Any, any one of these cameras are great to start out with. These cameras, they usually come with kit lenses and it's the perfect thing to get started with photography. If you're on the edge still, um, and you don't even know if you want to get a camera. You can start with what you have access to right now, which could be your phone. The first part of lesson one was to start thinking about photos differently. With that part, that's all you need to get started and your phone is perfect for it. Um, but yeah, I guess welcome to my official start to photography tips and lessons on this channel. So happy new years. I will see you in 2022. I would appreciate it tons if you subscribed and liked this video. A lot's coming. A lot's coming. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. We will get better together. I will see you next time.